and trying to have the best experience for the patient, reduce costs, improve quality of care. And so I just wanted to highlight that um, you'll notice that throughout the sessions at this conference and really encourage everyone to um, you know, meet the person next to you and kind of share what you're going through, what you're experiencing, and, and how we can kind of all come together to, you know, provide the best experience for the patient. And I think no one, um, well, I think a, a great representation of that is the Oregon Health Leadership Council. And so really honored to have Susan here to um, kind of explain what they do and how Oregon is at the forefront of of bringing those three circles together, uh, you know, implementing best practices and utilizing um, multiple sources of data uh, to help make the best decisions and, and improve care for all. So, Susan. Great, thank you. Uh, I don't, usually, I don't usually need a microphone. Inviting me to come and talk with you. I'm really excited. That really is. About 25 years and. Proceed to um, things that are in the early 2000s and became the director of the federally qualified health center in Multnomah County. HIV. Um, some provider. Information. Um, and how do we get everybody to work together? And a, a big thing with Oregon Health Leadership Council, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk about it. So, um, Health Leadership Council, many of you. things to make health care more affordable in Oregon. So that's that's really the roots. It came out of the business community. We have a collaboration between health So there's a picture. So you all virtually all the commercial health plans are part of OHLC, uh, you know what I auxiliary member, but they actively the, the medical division is at the table. You can see major hospitals and then some of the major medical groups. So it's a, it's a really great venue uh, for working together around OHLC as we, we really want to. And our
I think that's interesting. I'll give you a quick example. Last year, um, the legislative session around Medicaid funding, Southern Bank And so that and um, the process the governor. And come together to be really out front on some very important issues in Oregon. So, um, philosophy has been infrastructure costs, I would tell you, until July of, of last year. We're a virtual organization. Greg Van Pelt is the president. Many of you may know him. He was the CEO of Providence and retired. And but he's a contractor. A consultant. Uh, and so the idea was let's not let's not create a company and admire ourselves too much. You know. All the organizations, and many of you represent uh, organizations that are part of OHLC, there's the expertise that we had. And then the other thing uh, that's enabled us to keep Bring in other folks, increasingly, particularly in our clinical realm, which I'll talk with you about. It's becoming a table that um, a lot of stakeholders are coming. So you see, out to the bottom is the is the HIT Commons LLC, and I'm going to talk quite a bit about that. That's kind of the new exciting thing. That organizations represented. And then underneath. The round table. Um, impact. So I'll start uh, briefly with the Administrative Simplification Committee. It is exactly what you think it would be. It's made up of people who are operators. It's chaired by Eric Doolin, who's the Chief Operating Officer. Some administrative process. Spend more time talking. 
evidence-based best practice committee. Uh, and this group is made up of the clinical, the chief medical officers of all the commercial health plans, several of the CC, Oregon Health Authority, and then finally several um, health system CMOs. We have about 20 years. It's really well attended. How can we just agree this is the evidence? This is the right thing to do. For administrative processes. So. familiar with, was piloting a, a project where end-of-life conversations were had by, with trained health plans to being had at the legislature, and so improves quality and value. We stopped calling them reduced costs, um, and I highlight that because I'm with a group of finance people, and really talked about And then we are, we're always looking at utilization. A big project we did around utilization, and we're very mindful now of the fourth uh, part of the triple aim, now the quadruple aim, which is provider satisfaction and making sure. Cost, quality, and utilization. So we function in a functions in a couple of we lead and experts together develop recommendations. We might like a toolkit that
when we let reporting and communicating, which means we might convene people. That's really our course. depth so you get a feel so one of the many really wanted to part using shame I'll tell you who was the biggest loser but they're not now <laughs> but center primary care home come back to. Um, I talked to you about advanced care planning. We've been playing a role in a, a variety of different ways on opioid initiatives in Oregon. Opioid prescribing. And then recently uh, eliminating waste. There was a great study if you're interested in that topic. Washington Health Alliance, and we had the opportunity to see it and um, see the uh, the waste, and it isn't. It's really low dollar stuff, so unnecessary testing where there's no, but it's not needed, uh, and so. There's no evidence for that. So eliminating vitamin D testing and eliminating unnecessary pre-op testing. And working on this project with our physician colleagues, and I said, you know, EKG testing is unnecessary <laughs> before this type of surgery. And they're like, you know, it's a box they have to check. And I said, um, and because I'm a consultant, I'm a As you can imagine. Uh, that's been very effective. So I want to give you a little bit.
uh, and they're able to see that band, or maybe she was at an ER that doesn't have epic. Sure, I could see that. And so, first of all, we got every hospital in this technology. Uh, and the, I thought you guys might be the most interested in is we developed, we thought, well, how are we going to pay for this? All the hospitals agreed to pay. All the health plans agreed to pay in this utility model. And I call it I hate them. I hate them. Organizations and roads, and so I'm always. Yeah, but they were really a new company. They were only in Washington at the time, and so. To, to sell it in other markets. And then finally, data shop. So we contracted with a prize, the hospital association's data, and we do to this day. They continue to provide the analytics. Kind of how it got. And this is just an example. This is 2019 dollars. So this paid based on a tiered model. So hospitals, it was on their net patient revenue from the year before, and health plans, it was on their membership. And you can see if everybody pays, nobody has to pay that much. Uh, and in the beginning, rural hospitals really struggled $100 to get in, but it was like they didn't have it. Uh, so the original uh, part of the hospital, the, some of the rural hospitals, we to themselves. So, so that's And so, you know,
Um, that and then the way pre manage is paid for, so we the pre plan pays. But I can tell you the value of a few CCO started. The, uh, and now fast forward to 2018, every CCO in Oregon and every commercial health plan has pre manage. So they've seen the model for that. And then I'll tell you so you can see how quickly we started to. records and all that. So it's been pretty exciting and that's why we've seen uh, uptick in adoption. So again, when you think about it, I'm just going to start it as a little about how do we control it. Expand it so much of value. So I'm just going to go over the outcomes just quickly and then we'll move on. Um, the ED providers and they have told us still um, that this So, like Microsoft. Um, so anyway, but all these ways they could pull this together. And now it's all Automatically reducing their um, inpatient readmission. So that's another kind of what's happened from this. of that got started. And then, uh, of course, what we cared about in, in the aggregate was using ED utilization. Eddie in 2015, because something 150,000 additional Medicaid members in Oregon. So we saw, you know, but the good news is, and I think what
uh, reducing the They're not very impressive. Um, and that it, it is a public private partnership of cautious because as soon as So again, we started this a year ago. Sustainable.
we had with Eddie. So we developed, so we said, okay, how are we going to know if this is the right kind of project to take on? These to you. But and enables a coordinated uh, network for health information exchange. We are not taking on health information exchange in Oregon. That's another group. Um, three health information exchange networks. So I'll talk briefly. I don't know it's the first time. I a database called the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. <laughs> opioid prescribing. So then, um, And weren't even signed up for prescription. And yet we know this is a huge tool in combating the opioid epidemic. So uh, again, important to um, to them using it effectively. But again, implement it. So we decided to, um, that this would make, so this is just, I was just showing benefits. So what Eddie, act as the fiscal agent and the management partner. And the health systems, health plans don't get They knew the value of everybody having access to that. Going to pay, um, and so, but here for this, able to draw down substantial federal funds for this. So, And they're paying nine thousand dollars for PDMP for all their all their clinics, all their hospitals. We already have um, forty five hundred uh, and forty two clinics and healthcare entities. Again. The other
want to do. So this has been great. Here you can see how often the PDMP is being queried. But this is they're using it. How often are they querying the PDMP? And we know in, in Washington, when they integrated PDMP into uh, they were prescribing by 40% in the emergency department. So we know this works. And we know that. So And OHLC was never envisioned to be an operating company. We were really the convener. Operating a bunch of stuff. So then the board said, you know, I think it's time for us to crawl, um, to, to walk. Uh, it off. We decided it wasn't ready to spin off because a lot of the success had been Yeah. Healthcare career, I won't, again, I won't tell you how long, because then you'll know how old I am. Uh, but I, 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 I've really become convinced that the only way that we're going to get the kind of outcome, you know, if we could have been successful in improving care, reducing costs, uh, and improving client satisfaction by ourselves, we would have done it by now. And so I've become convinced and so happy to be finishing off my career working in this collaborative setting where we really come together again. change that much, but I do more. So we'll continue to coordinate and facilitate communication. These initiatives I've talked to you about, but it's really our stakeholders that decide um, and then we look, we're always looking, we don't want to duplicate, there isn't enough time or money to duplicate other efforts, so we really try to align ourselves, everything we do with our efforts, and we advocate, again, we're not policy people, but we policy agenda, so we work on Salem, and then, um, Uh, initiatives. So I'll end, I always like to end with a quote, and I love this one. It, 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 I like to go back. Um, we have lots of potential for the future. Sure. Yeah, we have a we have a, a kind of a strategic planning process with the evidence based best practice committee, and these guys are smart people. I mean, they just come to consensus. Maybe it's going to.
Uh, and then you know, people said, okay, let's more broadly. So, was that? Yeah. You talked about any of the technologies facilitating the exchange of information. So, did you have to deal with cultural change and change management as you brought together the No, it's so great. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that is. I will use the example of we were so excited. Just close something that hopefully is not okay. But when we Really interesting. those conversations, change management, and it's Some of the work that's happened. Any other questions? Yeah, so it's, I, I'm going to call it the canary in the coal mine. So before, uh, people would go to the emergency department all the time, maybe the health plan. Some clinics would get, like you were there yesterday, they wouldn't get, you were been there five times last month. Uh, and so it has allowed people to see who needs our help. I think we talked, and I, I'm very passionate about this. We talk about people that utilize the emergency department as bad people. And I say that it's people that our system is failing because we're not meeting their needs because they have needs.
the phone, the person's primary care provider, behavioral health, community support, social services. They all get on the phone and say, okay. So it's to take the lead. Here's their plan, uh, and here's what Yeah. Well, I, I really And then we're making some things up literature about what work. Um, on on opioid thing. Such things. One is presentation story. Um, one kind of Dick and Jane um, communication system. So um, you know, it's a great suggestion because I wouldn't have thought of you guys as people that would be interested. So we're working hard. Quarterly date. A long story about waste or something else, you can click on it. So, uh, and then you should let your uh, administrators know because it is. Um, I, I straddle both sides of the fence. Uh, you can't do this kind of work administratively and you can't do it clinically. You have to do it together. And so um, if you guys are interested, it'd be, you know, I would really highly encourage you. And are part of OHLC, but expertise that we need to do the work. 
Yes. So what you've done, you should be very proud of when people question about it, so like this uh, Mercedes is not possible. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's like the hot topic at OHLC right now. So, um, and probably all of you know, you know, all the stuff that's going on around value-based pay and total cost of care and uh, alternative payments and all of that. And so there's a bunch of work going on in isolation. And When you go around the hospitals, you know, talk about the health plan. Health plans talk about the doctors and yeah. So the business community has been super involved with OHLC and super supportive. Uh, they're, on board, they're invited guests. Um, but there's been That's really changed, and with the change in governor, there's a real change in the attitude towards the business community. So um, the business community is not in favor right now, uh, and so we still stay connected to them, but they have less of a role right now in healthcare, and it's all it's all political. They're still there. We have regular contact with Greg attends the business roundtable and the healthcare roundtable, so we stay connected. You know, they're they're really focused right now on PEB and OEB, and you know focused on what do you do about PERS, you know, so that we can afford healthcare, so, and education. Anything else? Great, thank you.